Hi all, I'm looking to bring more content here, but also want to make it relevant to our podcast. So me and Vijay are making a new series called The Pitch and The Swing, question mark, where we'll have the pitch side being posted here on the YouTube channel and the swing part being posted on the podcast. The pitch is where we, we try to convince each other to, you know, test the series out, while the swing will be our reaction after having consumed it. Hope you guys enjoy. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Manga for Dummies. I'm VJ. And I'm Max. (laughs) And today we've got a new series for you guys. Uh, Something of a... This will play into our quote-unquote shorts that we've been doing lately because we can't seem to find a long series that we want to cover on the podcast. Um, Well, I mean, you don't need to say it like that. We just want to bring you guys more content. And um, this is more content. That's true. It's it's easier for us to to give you guys shorts because there's less prep involved. But um, in and yeah, it's just more diverse. But uh, here we are. We're we're still looking for a long series. Don't worry. The next one, which is Battle Frontier, I think it's called Battle. No, that's the that's the Pokemon Blood Battle uh, Frontier. Bl- Black. Black. No, Battle blockade. Block Blockade. Battle Blockade. That'll Kai come... Sensen, whatever yeah. that is. There English you go. Game. That should be our next episode. But for now, we bring you a new little mini series. We'll we're calling <laughs> Elevator Pitch after 32 work seconds. Work in progress. Of, yeah, work yeah. in progress title. It's called Elevator Pitch. And what we're what this series is uh, what the series is is basically me and Yuan are going to try to sell each other a series, either manga or anime, that the other hasn't seen. And after our little uh, sales pitch, uh, the other will decide whether or not they are willing to give it a try. And we haven't discussed this at all, but maybe the next episode we could come back after having watched or read the series and, you know, see what we think if we decided to watch it, I guess. But uh, yeah, yeah, so pretty yeah, much it's like know. it's like the it's like when your friend comes up, he's like, yo, dude, you got to read this or you got to watch this. Like no, no, I'm telling you, like you, you really gotta, you gotta do this, man. Exactly. So this is basically this is. me and you on deciding if our tastes are good in series. I mean, all right. Um, so uh, we did a, we did a lot of debating on this and decided that I was gonna go first. And uh, the series I'm bringing to you today, you on, is relatively new. Uh, it's only okay. a couple years old, or the manga is, and then the anime is even more recent. Uh, it is called Osama Ranking or Ranking of Kings, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Okay. So, you so, want what do you know about this series? Um, honestly, you know, the only thing I really know is I saw like the cover page, not like what's the like the cover of like one of the volumes. Yeah. And it kind of looked like um like something like the Raimon or some shit. It looked uh, like this. By any chance. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. It looks like something that you get, you read like when you're six years old, like baby's first manga or some shit. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Well, let me tell you, Yuan, um, you're not wrong. The art is uh is simplistic, and it can deceive <clears throat> uh, people who maybe won't be willing to give it a chance because it looks like it uh, caters more towards a, a younger demographic, but... I'm here to tell you today, you that that is not the case. Oh. Um. Okay. So, uh, I did some sur- some very brief research, and like I said, this is a very recent series. The manga, the manga's first volume was released was released in 2019. Uh, it has 12 volumes out so far. I don't know if it's still ongoing. And then the anime came out like this year, maybe started the year like at the end of last year, or, like a few months ago. Couldn't tell okay. you. Uh, but I did not read the series. I watched it, and uh, I haven't seen much of the manga art, but I can tell you that the anime itself looks very pretty. It's very cleanly animated, um, and again, it is very reminiscent of a, of a children's show, but that is not the case. Right, but a, a children's show isn't necessarily, like, bad art. Exactly, like no, no, style. but it, yeah. it just, it could be deceiving. And okay. I will talk a little bit about how that in, uh, impacts the show later, but... For now, um, for now, we're just going to go into why I think you should watch this series. Gotcha. All right. So, um, 
what do you think <laughs> just based on this this cover I'm I'm showing you right now what do you think this series is about Right and uh, for reference it's pr it's just the volume 1 cover yes. um it, it I see like this this little dude with the little crown so I'm guess like it has something to do with the kings Okay uh the background you see like this golden maybe medieval village Mhm mm and then there's like these like slime monsters maybe Okay uh, but like it's I don't know because because it's a kid's show though it might be like something that he dreams up like you know how as a kid you usually like oh it's fucking I'm Super Saiyan and uh, and you like do the comment I man probably something like that it's, like he just runs around and yeah. like imagines like a truck is a dragon or something yeah okay okay well I'm not sure what the ranking part has to do with anything though I will explain it although for you dummies at home who are watching or listening um. This will remain spoiler-free, a spoiler-free sales pitch. So you want. Yeah. This series is not for children. <laughs> Wait, what? It is definitely not for children. Uh, it may be true. Sure. It may... This, is, this better not be a hentai. It's not a hentai. Okay, Jesus gotcha. Christ, you... <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it can be deceiving. The art can be deceiving. Um, but this is a, very much a character study uh it's a, a character study with this huge narrative involving conspiracies and plot twists and the ideals of people and um it also has amazing characters i'll say that right away before i get it, even into the story itself the, the characters are all fantastic you'll think that one character has a certain objective in mind but it uh, you'll find out like two episodes later that he did that for another reason and like it always keeps you guessing which is cool not every like nobody is who they seem except for our main character here boji okay boji so, what a fantastic his name, name is boji and he is a treasure all right look at this motherfucker oh, he is beautiful he is cute as fuck okay and he mm -hmm. made listen I, no spoilers but episode two i was in tears dude this shit is beautiful all right? happy tears or sad tears it, i will not i will oh, not disclose yeah, right, that information right, right, right. so yeah, that's fair Osama Ranking, okay? Ranking of Kings is a story that takes place in the kingdom of Boss. Um, <clears throat> it is a story that takes place in a world that is uh, very fantasy. Uh, the, I haven't, again, I haven't seen the manga art, but the anime art makes it seem like it's pulled straight out of a storybook. It's gorgeous. It's very nice, nice to look at, okay? Animation is fluid. It's beautiful. I said it was a character piece. There is some action in it, and the action is gorgeous. It's... It's a very it's very pleasing to the eye. All right. So in this kingdom of boss, we have the king himself, boss, who is a giant. Oh, OK. He is a giant. And one day uh, he was uh, roaming the land that would eventually become his kingdom. And it was being attacked by orcs or demons or some shit. And he mm -hmm. defeated them all by himself. And with right. that, he inspired the people to follow his lead, thinking that he could keep them safe and he founded his kingdom, okay? Gotcha. Uh, he had a son named Boji. Now, yeah, Boji okay. was born uh, with, with no properties of a giant. Okay, so he's not a big boy. No, exactly. He is a very small boy, very cute, small boy, adorable, 10 out of 10. I love him, okay? Gotcha. And the story follows Boji, mostly, uh, on his adventure to become the king. That is his ultimate goal. He wants to become the king. And the ranking of kings basically is, in this world, uh, every king goes through a test to determine how uh, competent they are as a king. Uh, okay. King Boss is ranked number seven. And I don't know oh, how shit, many... He's not even the best. Okay. No, he's not even the best, but he's like top tier as fuck, right? Uh, and, and that's Boji's ultimate goal is to become the king problem is he's not strong at all he is deaf and he can't speak huh wait wait wait. he's deaf he is deaf and he cannot and speak. mute yes Damn. okay well he's not mute like he can he like can communicate bare, like he doesn't say words but like he can use his voice you know oh so he, he just uh just can't use words yeah like he talks like eh, you know Okay, gotcha. He like mumbles and stuff. Anyway, so 
right there that that like that got me right in the heart personally cuz I'm 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 always rooting for the underdog, all right? OG top tier underdog. Always smiling, huge heart, super kind, doesn't have a lot of friends sadly because they don't understand him cuz you know, obviously if you had a disability back then people just thought you yeah, were it doesn't help, doesn't help. Exactly. Nothing nothing's going right for our boy, our boy Boji over here, okay? Mhm. Mm but one day he meets this this little blob shadow over here whose name is Kage. And Kage mm. is a petty thief who uh -huh. sees Boji uh and thinks he's an easy target. And and he's he's goo? Is that is that he what is, is he is a shadow. Oh, okay, gotcha. He's a shadow. This little claw thing you see here uh -huh. is his mouth. He has uh -huh. hands, but he like pulls out a mouth and he could pull shit out of his shadow little body to do all kinds of stuff, right? Um, right. Uh, that's important in the story, but I won't explain why. You'll have to watch to find out. Okay. Um, anyway, so he robs Boji because Boji uh, sneaks out of the castle one day and is just you know, chilling in a field, and Kage sees him, and he's like, oh, easy target, and he robs Boji. Right. Uh, Boji doesn't really care, and Kage is like, oh, shit, all right, easy pickings, come back tomorrow, give me more shit to steal. And through this exchange, uh, Kage ends up uh, coming to like Boji, and Boji obviously has someone to talk to, quote-unquote, uh, so he finds his first friend in Kage. And it's they they share a cute bond. It's adorable, um, and that's that's basically the 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 premise of the show is Boji, despite having his disabilities, wants to be the best king out there. Okay. So, do you ever hear his inner thoughts? Never. Or is it just? Oh, okay. All I right. think that's what makes it so powerful. And we've talked about this in previous series how anime will very much, it, you know, how good stories have a lot of show don't tell. Yeah. Anime doesn't really have that. Anime feels the need to always explain what people are thinking and what they're doing and why kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Unless, you know, it's this grand masterpiece, whatever the fuck, you know, super artsy, quote unquote. Right. Boji doesn't have that. You, you, you always have to guess as to what Boji's saying based on context clues. I think there's a very cute um, representation in Boji because you see him doing sign, uh, like ASL, or I guess okay. sign language because it's not just American. Um, you see him doing sign language, which I think is cool. Like, and they don't they don't subtitle it or nothing. Like, it's all context clues. Oh, shit, you yeah. gotta be in the know. All right, exactly. So I think that's yeah. super cool. I think there's very much to like about the main character Boji, and that's already a big plus. So, um, I won't give too much away again. That's the basic premise. Throughout the narrative, you'll see Boji uh, go through a whole bunch of hardships in order to become the king he wants to be. Okay. Goes on this cool journey, uh, you know, characters who you might think are leaning towards one way are actually leaning towards the other, but they're, they have, they're having to snake through a whole bunch of, you know, uh, landmines because they're in a very precarious position. It's kind of hard to talk about the plot of this series without, without spoiling stuff, so I'll keep it at that for now. Um, right. Characters, I already talked about Boji, he's great. Kage, who, like I said, you think... He's just this petty criminal who just comes to like Boji for his stuff. Actually, has this this depth to him that you 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 realize right away. They never really keep you guessing for too long, which I appreciate from the series about characters' motivations and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. so so Kage ends up being super relatable. I think every character here dances in a gray area where you can agree with every character and their actions for the most part, right? Um, yeah. it's not it's not just black and white. Everybody has a reason for wanting to do stuff, right? Um, then you have uh, Boji's brother, Daida. Oh, that's a guy. Yes, okay. he is Boji's half brother. And um, is he, he a giant? He is. Well, he's a half giant. Yes. Okay, gotcha. And his goal is also to become the king, but Boji is older than him. So he would be next in line. So something, you know, would have to happen oh, to Boji. Oh, right, 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 right. And um, the series is very cute about making you guess as to who the, the main antagonist is. For a bit of the series, you might think it's Dida. For the next, you might think it's Dida's father. It's, uh, yeah, well, that Dida and Boji's father. Yeah. It keeps you guessing, and I think that's really cool. Dida is, 
uh, very motivated to become a king, and he is willing to get his hands dirty to do it. But at the end of the day, he just wants to be the king so he can demonstrate how good of a king he'd be, despite his underhanded methods, all right? Okay, got it. And the reason he, the reason I bring Dida up as opposed to other characters who are also important is that he plays a significant role in the story later on. Right. Um, and, uh, and anyway, I won't, I won't say more than that, but he, he is an important character and he becomes one of the most, uh, important characters alongside Boji. And also fun fact in the anime, he's voiced by the same guy who voices, uh, Todoroki in my hero. Oh, which is okay. hilarious to me. <laughs> <laughs> I right, just think yeah, it's really cool. Nice. Um, right. And I mean, that's all I have to say. It's just a, it's just a very cute story, beautiful in its simplicity, but also willing to become very complex at the same time. It doesn't get bloated. It doesn't, it doesn't like throw plot twists at you for the sake of, of, of throwing plot twists at you. You know what I mean? It's not subversion for the sake of subverting. It all, it all ties back. It's not done yet. I think season one has like one more episode coming out next week. But I'm up to date, and I'm liking it a lot so far. Question time. Yeah, sure. Um, when you say it's more, it's not, did you say it's not kids friendly, or it's just not targeted to kids? So, it, like, can I sit down with, like, a little cousin or something and watch this? At first glance, you might think that, but literally episode two, you see motherfuckers getting murdered. People, oh. people die in this oh. show, you see blood, it's graphic, like... Oh, okay. So it's yeah, yeah, Game yeah. Of Thrones. No, no, awesome. this is serious shit. It's literally Game of Thrones if Game of Thrones was <laughs> was drawn by a children's book artist. Okay. All um, right, all right. But at the same time, because that might be a concern, the art never detracts. It never takes away from the series. It might seem mm -hmm. kiddie. It's just a simplistic art style, and I think that's that's so cool. It's very powerful yeah. too. Like, you're not, you're not having a fucking, you know, like, it, you know how some manga art sometimes just gets fucking confusing because there's just lines everywhere? That will never yeah. happen when you watch Ranking of Kings or read it. Mm, all right. I just think it's great. Um... And if, I, if you'll allow me to gush before you ask, your, you ask your next question, dude, Boji might be one of my favorite protagonists that I've seen in a fucking anime in, in years. I love this and motherfucker. That's without him saying a single word. Yeah. I would die for this fucker. He is so cute. So pure of heart, dude. It's, oh my god, he's beautiful. I love him Damn. so much, dude. He just, oh my god, from the first scene, he fucking tugs at your heartstrings. And then episode two, he just fucking rips him out, dude. It's fucking, oh, so good. <laughs> All right. Uh, second question. Yes, is there sir. any comedy? Or is it just straight up, like, action, action, drama, um, murder, conspiracy? Like I said, murder. the plot. the plot is... Um, the plot is it, it doesn't, it doesn't get distracted. Um, there is humor, you know, people make jokes, obviously. Right. I wouldn't say it's comedy centric though. Not at all. Mm -hmm. Jokes okay. are made, okay. but it is a very serious narrative about, uh, conspiracies in a kingdom, you know, character goals and how far they're willing to go to achieve those goals, stuff like, and the methods by which they'll do it, stuff like that. Gotcha. All right. I guess uh, let's, let's just give each other like three questions. I guess we'll just like leave it All at right. that because I want well, to leave. Like, you have one more specific. question, I think. Ooh. Um. So you said there's action. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Is it, is it going to be Boji doing action? Oh, do I want to know? Um. So there is action, though, right? There is action. There is. Uh. It's very clean, very nicely animated. I will say, you do see Boji in action. But oh, you see a lot of other hey. characters as well. All right, that sounds cool. Uh, like I, it's been a while, but you know I liked a lot of these um, almost kind of like a coming of age stories. Uh, like I remember yep. one of the reasons why I liked the uh, Dragon Quest Adventure of Dai was actually Dai himself, and that was like this little kid for sure. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think this this might actually be right out my alley. Like uh. Well, Especially with that art style, I think like that that like dissonance between yep. the art and and like the themes would be kind of cool. 
Yeah, it's very it's a very digestible series. You never you you'll never be lost if you're paying attention. Like it's really good. It, All right, well, it's classic hero's me. journey, man. It's it's fucking amazing. I love it. So on well a scale done, of, on a scale of one to ten, how mu how willing are you to watch this series? Uh I think like an eight. Ooh, yeah, definitely okay. an eight. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. I can see that. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, I'm okay. This was. Ooh, you bring me hard competition. All right. Yeah. Um, so for me to balance it out, I had to like aim for your weak points. So you know, I looked back and I saw that you know <laughs> this man keeps going for those sports anime. Oh, so I did it. You know, we we did uh, basketball. We did vol. Uh, no, not volleyball. We did a uh, football. football. Yeah. So now we're gonna show you what the rest of the world calls football. Uh, Blue Lock. <laughs> so Blue Lock is this um soccer series uh currently one of the reasons why it's been getting some level of hype recently is because uh the anime was announced but i oh, guess sure. for now i can only really announce uh, i could really recommend the the manga you know uh lately like there's been some really good manga but when it got adapted it's kind of ass kind of like shumatsu um so i out of precaution i'm not gonna recommend you the anime just yet so uh i think we're gonna stick with the manga okay so some quick things about the manga. This was released, it started beginning release in 2018. And only a few short years later in 2022, the anime is expected to come out. There is currently 17 volumes. And most importantly, in 2012, so just last year, it won the, 20, uh, the 45th Kodansha Manga Award in the Shonen category. Oh, shit. So uh, it's pretty good. Um, so in terms of premise... So, I guess one question I have to ask you is, uh, do you follow, like, the FIFA World Cups and stuff like that? Not really. Okay. Well, I could tell you in general, Japan is not good. Like, I think okay. their highest record is, like, top 16. Okay. And then, so, uh, so that's, like, it's, like, a sore point, uh, for, for Japanese soccer. So, that, you know, the, you could be, like, the best soccer player in Japan, but you'll probably still be, like, second rate. Is the, this is, like, the whole point. Okay. I'm not saying this like out of the like, trying to be mean to Japanese soccer players out there. I just mean like this is like pretty much the idea of the of the series. Yeah, it's like uh it's like boxing in Epo. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um so in pretty much the story starts out in like twenty eighteen, the last at the end of the last World Cup, and it turned out that Jap Japan like they didn't go too far again. They ended in like sixteenth, I think. Mm -hmm. And so they're like, you know what, I we're tired of this. Well let's let's let, there's this one guy who's called um it's actually a really dumb name if you think about it. It's called like, ego. Okay. He's like, you know, you know what's the problem with uh, our Japanese players? They don't have enough ego. They oh they God. all want to play for the team. You know, it's even like the striker who's supposed to be like you know the the goal maker and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's like, oh no. Even if he gets the chance to get the shot, he'd rather pass it to get like increase your percentage by just a little. When sometimes you just even if it's a fifty fifty, you rather take the fifty fifty. Mm -hmm. Like pass it to somebody and then it's like you're not taking responsibility for your shots which is the whole point okay so what this guy goes he, what this guy does he went around like scouting all the best potential strikers and like these amateur teams like all these high school teams these um like uh hobby league teams and he found like all the best strikers and he he pretty much <laughs> invited them to this um training regime so what they did is they actually locked them all inside a building and had them do drills uh -huh. and then compete each with each other to see who would be the best striker for the national team. Okay. <laughs> that's the right. series. Yeah, that's the series. So it's all about... One thing I really like in the way it deviates from other sports series, I mean, we, we've been through a few. Mm -hmm. um, so, for example, we kind of, like, joked about, uh, for example, Rukawa in... Um, in what's it called? Dunk. In Slam Dunk, how he's like, oh, he single handedly does like forty points. Yeah, but like that's like that's what superstar should be able to do, right? So you should be able to like forty points by yourself if mm -hmm. you really really need to. If the game needs you to do it, you should be able to do it. Yeah, the that's ace. the whole point. So because Japan is kind of lacking in strikers, they're trying to force the creation of a striker, like kind of create a filter so that whoever comes out on top should technically be the most egotistical, the the most uh savage of strikers that's just enough to bring japan to a win okay so that's the whole thing um our main character is uh yoichi isagi is so this who i'm looking at right now 
No, no, this is Yuichi Isagi. He's kind of like Kuroko in a sense that he's like he's kind of second rate in most things. Okay. Uh, I don't have a picture from him right here, but That's okay. I, I could uh, I could quickly find. So he's kind of blandish. Holy shit. Yeah, oh, that's okay. him. So, okay. Yeah, that's him. He, he's you. kind of blandish. You know, he's he's like, you wouldn't really, if in terms like, you know how the, everybody says like, oh, anime characters all have like green hair and yeah. and pink hair. He's bro. like, he's kind of boring in that sense. <laughs> he doesn't have it. He doesn't even have a different hair color, bro. Yeah, he doesn't even have a different hair color. Um, So yeah, this is, uh, but the reason why, for example, the first volume, you can see him intently looking at the ball is that his, his quote-unquote ability and each of these guys will have like quote-unquote abilities uh-huh. is uh to like be able to see the ball in any situation okay. and pretty much he has like the bird's eye view of the things you got a good like game sense yeah and yeah okay not exactly like, there's like a technically a difference uh but pretty much roughly speaking yeah you're right roughly speaking he'll uh, never lose track of the ball yeah, never lose track of the ball. Like he, the thing is, he's not he's not like the physically most able. Like uh, he's like all right, but he's like he's like m- just hitting like the average speed of of running, and dribbling, and all that shit. But his his thing is, he look at he he can like keep an eye on the ball and stuff like that. If you'll allow me to ask an extra question with my other three that I can ask right now, yeah, why does he have a chain around his neck? Okay, so the chain. So I don't think it's really a sport. So the whole point of this um, regime, like this training regime, is that they want them to like break free of the shackles of like the team. Like even if um, even if everything else is holding you back, you should be able to still make points. Is the whole point? Okay. Like, uh, should, yeah. So so, uh, so that's not like a visual representation for art. That's like that happens in the series. No, 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 no. Okay. Like I mean, like it's it's a uh, it's like yeah, it's a symbolist symbol symbolic thing. I got you. Okay. So, uh, apart from that, I mean, as an artist yourself, you'll really probably appreciate the art. Looks great. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really clean. And then when it really needs God to, it, damn. it like, pushes it up. Uh, all the characters are, like, super... They're almost, like, comed- like uh, comedically, like, straightforward. Mm-hmm. But in a way, it, like, makes sense. So you have, like, characters who are, like, oh, dude... We should still play as a team. Then we'll have you'll have characters that are like, "Fuck you all, give me the ball no matter what." I will make points even if uh, like I rather make one point and lose three points than let anybody else make the points, which is almost like a joke. But it's like it kind of works in the sense that maybe that's what you need in a team. Yeah, that's that's what they're trying to make, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so fucking cool. Yeah, recently ish, uh, they just almost um they're trying to like include international teams too and like they made some joke uh joke pretty much like um joke representations of real life teams Mm. um but like they made it in a way that almost makes sense so it's like you get like different play styles which is nice too uh so yeah i think it's uh it's pretty good series it's currently not yet completed and, uh, but if, like, if the anime is, like, even, it uh, doesn't even have to be, like, 100% as, as good as this, like, 80% as good as the art, I think it'd be pretty dope. Cool. Uh, what can you tell me about the characters? Okay, uh, so some good characters. So, Isagi, I think, uh, Blue Boy, yeah. I guess. Um, he, he's, like, he's... He's like the typical representation of like a, a normal soccer player, I guess, or like the average person. The men so like, line. Yeah, so uh he, he's not particularly special. Um, but he, he does everything a little bit right. Um a few characters it's really hard to say because some of the characters will resonate with you in different ways. Mm. Uh so we have uh we have like the whole gamut, like these super talented prodigy types. We have the kind that are like um He's like, oh, I had, I got the best training. Uh, my family was super rich. I got the best training as a kid and stuff like that. And like sometimes that works for you, but like because I, I got all this training, I have like high expectations for myself, and other people have expectations of me. Mm. Uh, you have other characters are like just super egotistical. Yeah. And uh, he's like, like I know I'm not the best, but I don't give a shit. Like give me the fucking ball. That kind of that kind of person. And um, 
it's like some some of them will resonate some of them will be like oh i'm always in it's like my my brother used to be the best so i'm in his fucking shadow and it's kind of it kind of works in in different ways um so i can't really recommend any singular one uh so for example the one you're seeing on screen who's like this super egotistical one yeah uh is one of my favorite I couldn't um, tell that I... he was egotistical. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you probably couldn't tell. Um, <laughs> he seems so humble. <laughs> the best part is that he sometimes like takes the ball away. Like you, you know how like you're supposed to like uh, shadow the per- the en- like the other person on the enemy position that yeah. you're. He tum- he sometimes runs to get your ball, and he's on your team. That's fucking hilarious. Yeah, so he he's like comedically funny. Okay. Um. So yeah, I think. Uh, specifically it's it's not the best story I'll, I'll be frank but like in a way it's kind of refreshing if you've like read so many sports mangas that are like oh we got to work as a team to win as a team um in that sense it's this is a more individualistic uh sports series okay. uh even though soccer is still technically a spoy um a team team's sport, game yeah. mm-hmm. i see so yeah okay this is blue lock question um how uh let's say from kuroko between kuroko and haiku how realistic is the the world that this this shit takes place in like are they are they shooting laser beams out their feet like is the ball disappearing behind the goalie and into the net or is it is it fairly realistic I think I would call it fairly realistic if you ignore, like, you know, the ethics of, of like, locking up 40 kids, 40 young boys in one Yeah, room. barring the premise. Um, yeah, uh, I think it's, it's relatively um, realistic. Like, you visibly see the person getting, like, a, a, ran, a random person getting tired after they, like, exercise themselves. So, like, for example, there's this one guy who runs really, really fast, mm-hmm. but like, he can only play for, like, six minutes at that top speed. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's so, I think it's, it's rather realistic. Um, You'll see injuries. You'll see more so than uh, Ice Shield too. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, Ice Shield so, yeah. is pretty fucking goofy. To be fair. Yeah, I think Ice Shield is a is a is a weird measuring stick, but yeah, I would yeah. say so. So um, it leads more to the high Q. Yeah, I would say it leads more to the high Q. Okay. Uh, that said, it, be, I mean, like for example, this this is, you'll see visual representations of what they're doing. Like, for example, this line isn't, like... It's not like... Yeah, no, no, of course. But, I mean, they have that in Haikyuu, too, right? Like, when Haikyuu yeah, yeah. not to jumps really high, you see the, the crow's wings or whatever. Right, right, yeah, yeah. Something like that. So, you, you, I really love these, um... These, like, visual representations. I, there's some better ones, too, but it's kind of spoilery, so I didn't want to go to this totally one. That's uh, yeah. totally... Why does this art look so familiar to me? Do you know who the artist is? So, I have it right here. It's illustrated by Yusuke Nomura. I feel uh, like we've heard that before. The art did seem very familiar to me. Right? Uh, let's see if he's done anything. I wouldn't be surprised if you tell me Eye Shield guy wrote made this. But you said Eye Shield is doing One Punch Man, so. Yeah, no, that's not him. Uh, so, from what I understand, he's kind of like a a company artist for like the manga okay publishing company so like let's say you have a really good script you bring it and but you can't really draw the the manga this guy does it for you i got you yeah it might do it for you so he might have done other things that are just like in general maybe like some uh poster arts or something something like that okay okay well he's really good the the fucking lion you're showing me is incredible yeah i can't do that shit um uh, he did dolly kill kill but i've never read that okay uh second question would be now you you explain the premise is the entire series just these same players going up against each other to determine who's going to be the striker for the national team or are they making the entire team is, so, or is that a spoiler pretty much it's so the idea is that whoever comes out of this would become the the official striker of the national team. Okay. I and that's can't all say I have without to know. Spoiling. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. That's totally fine. Okay. How would you say the pacing of the series is? Is it like, is it like Ice Shield where we see, uh, only the highlights basically? Is it like, 
uh, is it like Haikyuu where maybe it slows down and we see like a character having a struggle or somebody learns a, you know. Um, I, I think it's a little bit, it's not as much as Haikyuu, but it's leaning towards more like Haikyuu. Okay. Uh, so the pacing is, is kind of good, I guess, because there's no, there's no like, like in real, in most sports mangas, right? So it's usually like a, either a, a league, so there's a scheduled games. But this one is like pretty much just training regime after training regime after training regime. Um, so you you will find like, oh, today we're doing a practice game. Next day we're uh, dribbling the ball, see who could dribble the longest or something like that. Or okay, the fastest. that's cool, that's um, cool. So it, it kind of varies it up. Uh, like I said, there's no... There's no like exhibition games uh, or or stuff like that. And I mean, football or soccer, football, whatever you want to call it, it's it's not a very high point scoring game. So how do they balance that in this without you know without spoiling too much? Like, is it a lot of back and forth? Are they just scoring goals out the fucking tits? Is it just? It goes game by game. I can't. There's no blank answer for that. Okay. Sometimes you might see like a team just ram through the other one. Mm-hmm. Some other times it's, it's a it's a pinch. I mean, the art alone is making me curious. I'd definitely give it a chance. All right. Well, with that, I will need your. <laughs> you score, know what? Though. Funnily enough, this kind of gives me some new Prince of Tennis vibes, but good. You know, because I mean, that's what new <laughs> Prince of Tennis is, right? They're like trying to determine yeah. the next fucking tennis superstar. Yeah, yeah. I think I I personally love the So, I mean, in a lot of uh just go back to like some of your favorite moments in like for example, Ice Shield, uh when um but when, when he, he does the devil bat ghost for the first time. Well, well, like something like that or when he like says like, "Oh, I actually want to play" or like "I want to win." I think some, that was like kind of like the best moments in Ice Shield, like um or I think I guess you could say the same thing in in, in um, Slam Dunk when I forget it's kind of it's a weird example because I forgot what his name was uh, Ham- oh, Hanamichi, Hanamichi yeah. when he was like pissed at himself for like losing the game like those moments were were kind of the ones that resonated the most with me of course so in that sense this is like directly tackling that right okay. so like if you don't want to if you don't want to win then don't fucking play soccer is the whole point yeah well this this to me is a little bit like what ranking of kings is it's well you know not ranking of kings is not that ranking of kings is a straight-up shonen but this is a shonen but it's also a character study like every character is here for their own reason and it's basically a, a test of their motivations yeah yeah that's really cool I mean, shit, yeah. dude, I'll, I'll give this. In terms of curiosity, I'm like a fucking nine. I want to read this. I could, I could definitely see a world where you don't enjoy this. Like, it's, it's a, it's kind of specific. It's a niche. In terms of, yeah, it's a niche. Because uh, it's know, not it's, your it's, typical it's, sports series. Exactly, yeah. The pacing is different from most sports. Like, you, you will rarely see, like, a, a whole team working together. Like, learning to get together, and then by the end be like, the superstar team. Yeah. Uh, this is not. This is not it. Though the argument could be made that that's really fucking creative. Yep, I really like the spin, yeah. and that's what keeps me into it. I've never. I've never. Well, minus Prince of Tennis, but that show sucks. So whatever. And tennis is like a is like a one man. Well, I guess exactly. Tennis is made to be a like a one man sport, right? So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, dude. I'll, I'll give it like an eight. Yeah, I'll give it a nine. I'm fucking. I'm. I'm down to read this. All right then. Now, I will say this is our first time doing this, so maybe we'll be a little too generous with our with our end scores. Um, yeah. we'll work we'll out see. the kinks for next episode. Yeah, we'll work out the kinks for next time. And we finally uh, made yeah. a short episode. We finally did. Uh, I mean, this was fun. I, I like this, this was fun. This was, uh, yeah. Um, we got to see a little more. I, I like that we brought two different things. It would have been awkward if I, I like I brought if you brought like a sports anime. And I'm like, <laughs> oh no, 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 read this sports. Very anime. Very true. Yeah. Yeah. Although so, that could uh, be an interesting mat, like an interesting clash. Yeah, yeah, true, true. Like, you know, no, what, no, no, dude. You know what we could do is next episode it, if we have a third person here who we're pitching this shit to. Oh shit! And okay, then he yeah, has yeah. to say which one he would rather read. Oh fuck! All right, all right, yeah, okay. Well, you know, you we've got some ideas. Yeah, we've, we've got, got some, some workshopping to do. Yeah, yeah. 
All I right, hope you guys dude. enjoyed this. This was a short. Uh, we're still working on the name. Maybe we'll call it like elevator or elevator sales pitch. pitch. Like elevator pitch like for dummies. Elevator, <laughs> elevator sales. Keep it on yeah. brand. All Literally right. adding blue lock to my fucking manga shit. Oh. Oh, and a new chapter just came out? Boy, oh, we oh, out you here. You know what I'm doing right after. <laughs> All right. Well, sorry, you want to go ahead and sign us off? I was just fucking mumbling like a dumbass. Again, thank you, dummies, for listening. Um, this was a, another short by us. Uh, we will be back soon with um, like an quote-unquote official episode. And I hope you stay tuned for that. Yes, sir. That's uh, VJ and you on signing off. Nope, bye bye. nope, having a nope. fish gasm. Oh, fish gas. Oh, yeah, that's. There it is. Gotta keep it on brand. Good God. <laughs>